Zoom issues. Um, but thank you so much for being here again. Thank you for your patience. Totally apologize. But I'm glad you're here because we're gonna have a fun, fun class today talking about um, some pumpkin treats for the fall and a really, really yummy treat that you can make with apples and some of this delicious stuff that you can find at your local Michael store. Um, my name is Megan Faulkner Brown and I am the sweet tooth fairy. Um, I I'm coming to you from Utah, from the American Craft Studios. And um, it's been a really, really great thing to be able to partner with them and with Michaels to just to share the, the treat love with you all and, and, um, and teach you guys a few things that I've learned over the years of my baking life. <laughs> so since we are, you know, lost some time in the beginning. I'm just going to go ahead and I won't bore you with my backstory, um, but we're just going to go ahead and get, get right to it. So the first thing that we are going to um, go over are, and it's a little bit of like a sneak peek into an upcoming product that we will have in Michael's store soon. Um, and that is some pumpkin spice cupcakes. And I'm just going to give you some basic kind of like tips and tricks along the way um, while we're making them and show you a few different ways that you can decorate them and frost them. Um, and we'll just kind of go from there. I should say, if you have any questions, we do have Matt who's behind the scenes and he's amazing and he can help answer some of your questions. And then we also have Lindsay with Michaels and she can, she can also ask any of the questions that you have. So, Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience. And let's let's get to it, shall we? Um, okay, so one thing that is that is really exciting is this pumpkin spice cupcake mix that will be coming out. Um, and I should say that I am a super fan of baking from scratch. <laughs> I love it. I grew up baking that way. And um, but it's not for everyone, right? So uh I've gone ahead and developed a really delicious pumpkin spice recipe that will be available to you that you can pick up. Um, but what I'm gonna share with you today is applicable to all of your you know, cake or kind of cupcake recipes that you would be using. So this recipe, um, well, first I wanted to say like tip number one, and it's gonna sound really, really like basic and simple, but I promise it will prove to be beneficial to you throughout your baking experience, experiences. And that is to just read the recipes from start to finish and read the instructions. I can't tell you how many times and still to this day where, you know, I, I look at the ingredients and I'm like, oh, okay, I know how to do this. Or, you know, you think you're familiar with the steps and you don't really read them all the way through. And then as you're going and you're just kind of winging it, you, you kind of, you kind of botch the recipe because you didn't really read it from start to finish. So for me, that is something that I have to remind myself to do, but I promise it's very, very helpful because sometimes there's some like surprise steps or there are some unique, you know, things that they want done that recipes will call for um, like done to particular ingredients or processes. And so again, super basic, but I promise it will be helpful to you. And um, the other thing I wanted to say is if you're ever reading a recipe and it recommends to use room temperature ingredients, I would highly recommend doing that. And there's a lot of science behind it. Um, I don't have a lot of time to like explain it all, nor do I actually know all of all of the science behind it. But I, I will say that if a recipe does say that, then it, it says that for a reason. So just a little little tip to just follow instructions. And the other thing is once you've once you've followed a recipe and you've made it and it turns out the way that you like, right? Then I would say take the liberty to make alterations and to tweak things here, or add things there, or substitute ingredients. Um, because then at least you know the first time that when you did follow follow the directive that it turned out. And so then as you build upon that you'll know you'll always have something to come back to if it doesn't turn out with your changes 
that you've made. So, okay, enough of, enough of that. <laughs> but all I've done here with this cake mix is I've just put it into um, you know a mixing bowl. And the recipe that is on the back of the um, the bag, oops, is just calls for a cup of water and a half a cup of oil. And then it calls for three eggs. And one thing I, I don't know, it's just, maybe it's just a Megan thing, but I like to crack my eggs into a separate bowl first. And then I just kind of gently uh, beat them. So they're already mixed together. Because one thing that you don't wanna do when making batters or really kind of even doughs is um, over mix your ingredients. And again, this kind of goes back to the sciency part of it and what happens with the gluten in that process. But along the way, if you over mix your ingredients, then the result is gonna be like a tougher textured baked good. And personally, I think baked goods should be not tough. <laughs> should be sensitive and, and kind. <laughs> no, they should be, in my opinion, you know, kind of light and airy and fluffy and not, not super tough. So when you're mixing, I'm actually just using this whisk that I was uh, using to mix the eggs, but I'm just gonna switch over to a hand mixer. And when you're mixing the batter, you want to just do it until the ingredients are like, just until the wet and the dry ingredients come together. So again, you you don't want to like you don't want to like whip it unless again the instructions call for that, but they likely won't when making a batter. Um, and I just kind of take the hand mixer and go around in a circle and try to get any potential. Um, you know, flour or mix that's on the bottom. And then you'll see here, I'll kind of stop like halfway through and I'll scrape down the sides and try to just make sure that on the bottom, there's no surprise little pockets of the mix or the flour or what have you. Looks like we're good. I'm just gonna give it, mix it for just, a little bit longer. And, you know, at this point, if, so this is, again, this is a pumpkin spice mix. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could, could throw in some chocolate chip. If you wanted to make like a pumpkin chocolate chip cupcake, which would be super good. But right now we're just gonna, stay the course and just scoop them just like this. All right, so then all I've done is lined um, a cupcake liner with, excuse me, a cupcake pan, muffin pan rather, with some cupcake liners. And I would say as a general rule, you know, every recipe varies, but when it comes to cupcakes, I would say, that going off of filling your liner two thirds of the way full, like should be, should, should mean that you would have like a pretty darn near perfect cupcake in size. If it's, you know, these, these standard size liners and this standard size pan. Now, in order to get that like two thirds full, right? Cause it's kind of maybe subjective. <laughs> um, but I, I like to use these dishers or these ice cream scoops or cookie scoops or whatever you call them. Um, but if, if you don't have them, then you could also, if you have like a, a mixing bowl that has a, a spout, can you see how this kind of has, let me put it against my apron, there we go, has a spout and you could use something like that and pour it in. Um, you could also use like a disposable pastry bag. You could fill the batter into one of your pastry bags and you could squeeze it in. So you kind of have a little bit more control over that like two thirds mark. Um, but again, I have this, this disher and we're gonna see how many 
I'm going to say probably two. <laughs> two of these will make it about two thirds of the way full. And um, yeah, that's about right on. And this is about, I would say, about an, an ounce of, of batter. Um, but you could always just use, you know, like a tablespoon and any, really anything you have by way of spoon. And sometimes you'll see, like, I'll kind of go back. If it looks like I didn't get it that two thirds of the way full, then I'll just take a, a little bit of the batter, you know, not fill it all the way and, um, and just add a little bit more. Now I, you, you might get lucky and find one of these dishes that is the exact amount um, fluid ounce wise that would just be the perfect amount when you did one scoop, but that's not the case today, but I'm still using it because it's super easy just to put it in, squeeze the handle and have it plop out. It's not as messy um, and you can kind of get somewhat of an even distribution of the batter. Now here in this super darling studio, we actually don't have an oven here on set. So there will be some TV magic that happens here momentarily. And you'll see that we'll have some delicious baked pumpkin spice cookies that will emerge here momentarily. Now you can see that I kind of like right here, there's a little bit of a dribble. So I would just, well, I'm gonna use my apron because I can't find my rag, but I just like to make sure that I clean up the pan as much as possible before I put it in the oven, just because it makes cleaning it after easier. Um, you know, inevitably it's gonna get messy and spill and there'll be stuff stuff on it but just along the way as best I can I I like to try to just clean up clean up the edges so the other thing is that typically again cupcakes I feel like they're for the most part they're pretty simple in terms of baking because they're it's such a small amount of batter and it's confined to the pan and to the liner um, I would venture to say that about 18 to 20 minutes is like your sweet spot. And that, I would say that for any recipe. Um, granted, all ovens are different and, you know, um, air quality or not, well, quality, but like humidity and dry, dryness like that obviously plays into things. But I would say check them at about 18 minutes, regardless of where you are. And, um, and I would say that you'll be probably pretty darn, darn close to done if not done at that point. And the one, there's a couple of things you can do to test to make sure that they're done. And I'm sure you've all heard of like the toothpick trick, right? Where you just take a toothpick and you put it, you know, well, you take the cupcakes out of the oven so you don't burn your arms and your hands like I did when I was a little girl. And, um, and then you would insert a toothpick into the center of the cupcake. And when you pull it out, if there's no, like wet batter or even kind of like little crummy pieces, then you know that it's done and that it's cooked all the way. The other thing that you can do if you don't have toothpicks or if you wanna try something new is um, it's just kind of like the bounce back test. And what that means is, why don't you, or I'll show you some of the ones that are done. Granted, these, have, these are not like just fresh out of the oven, but what you'll be able to see is when you push down on that, cupcake when it does come out of the oven if it bounces back like if it springs up see how it's bouncing back like that then you know then you know that it's done if you press down on it and you don't have to like push super hard by any means but if you just press gently down on it and there's an indent or if it just like stays pushed down then you know that it does need a couple more minutes. And with cupcakes, because they do bake quickly, um, you're gonna wanna just check them. I would say every, like every minute, check them in like minute increments because it'll, they'll bake quickly and you don't wanna over, you don't wanna over bake them. Um, so uh, after they're, 
after they're baked and you know they're done because they're bouncing back or the toothpicks coming out clean, then you're going to want to let them cool completely. And sometimes, you know, your life is busy and we're in a rush. So normally what I and my life is kind of like that all the time. So I like to speed up the cooling process. Um, so normally what I would do is just let them cool in the, the baking pan, the pan that they baked in for about 10 minutes. And by that time, they'll still be kind of warm. Um, the pan won't be like super hot to touch. Uh, and then you can take them out. And then I would, I'd put them on like a cooling rack. So one that has, you know, like the wire, rack underneath so the air can cool from the top and the bottom. And then I would stick that either in the fridge or the freezer for, you know, 10, 20 minutes, just again, to kind of like speed up that process. Um, but if you have all the time and you're not in a rush, then you can just let them cool out on the counter. And I would say about 30, 30 to 40 minutes, just at room temperature would be fine. The other thing you could do at this point is if you wanted to bake these ahead and just leave them unfrosted and undecorated, then you could put them in an airtight container, whether that's like a, a plastic bag or like a Tupperware or something. You just want to make sure that it's airtight and then you store it in your freezer. And then you could, I mean, you could bake these days ahead. You could bake them a week ahead if you, you know, if you have something coming up that you know you're going to need them for. And you'll just, when you're ready to frost them, you could take them out of the freezer and let them come to room temperature about probably again, like 20, 30 minutes to come to room temperature and then you can decorate them. So, so yeah, it's a little, it's a little life hack. If you want to, you know, want to bake some stuff ahead and have it in the freezer. I've got, I have six kids and they're all kind of at that age where they like to, three of them girls, three more boys, and they're all at this age where they, they want to like create and do things. And when they have friends over, they want to, Hey mom, can we do this? Can we do this? So it's nice to have some options like, sure. Do you want to decorate cupcakes? Um, and then it just is your one step ahead, right? You could just grab them out of the freezer and off they go. So anyway, all right, I'm going to show you, well, are there any questions at this point? Yes. No. Uh, no, so far we're doing good. Okay. That Anyone either means I'm really clear? boring or I'm doing a kind of okay job. <laughs> Probably You're the former, great. but that's okay. That's okay. You're doing great, but uh, just a <laughs> reminder, everyone, if you do have questions, just put them in the chat. All right. Yes, and ask all the questions, even if it's not related to, you know, to this specific class. If you've been in another class I've taught and you have questions or just general baking, I will try to answer them. Okay, so on to decorating. So I, I have some disposable pastry bags. You can get these in different sizes available at Michael's. And, um, there's a couple different things I wanted to show you. So also at Michael's, you will find, you wanna zoom in on these if you don't mind. Like I just grabbed a different kinds of tips and Michael's has a really wide variety and wide selection of tips available for you. So, um, so don't feel like you have to go and get these exact ones because I just wanna show you how useful it is to have a little, just some tools that you might not otherwise have, but just how like much of a difference they, they can make if you do have them. So if you don't have any decorating tips, I'm just gonna cut this pastry bag and show you what you can do with just having like a round tip. So I'm just gonna cut about an inch back off of the, pastry bag and so you can you can see it's round ish <laughs> right so there you have your your round tip even though it's not a tip it's just the plastic bag and um so it's kind of like a signature swirl I would say and 
kind of like how I like to describe doing it is you're going to, we're going to make three swirls. The first one is like you're tracing the outside of the top of your cupcake. Then once that circle is complete, like once you've completed and traced the outside of that circle, you're just going to bring your tip and lift it up just a little bit. And then you're going to start another little circle. It's going to be smaller, right? Because now you've, you've moved your frosting on top of that outer ring. So you will do one complete, two complete, and then we'll do a tiny little third complete one. I'll go slowly to show you. Um, and, but it's just a really classy, like elegant, I mean, as elegant as cupcakes can get, <laughs> way to, um, to frost. So I like to start my, like to put the tip of your, pastry bag about a quarter of an inch up from, let me just wipe that off, from the cupcake. So I'm going to get pretty darn close to it. And I'm going to ap um, apply some pressure to the piping bag and just ap keep applying even amounts of pressure as I go. So I'm going slowly to show you, right? So here I have, now I've completed one circle, right? And I stopped to show you that the circle is complete. Well, now I'm gonna keep applying equal amounts of pressure and I'm coming up, re raising my pastry bag just a little bit. And I've completed that second circle. And I'm gonna do my third one, which is gonna be kind of itty bitty. And I'm still applying equal amounts of pressure and I'm releasing as I pull the bag up. So you can, you can see, let me tip it this way. You have this, you see from, I don't know if they'll, the lighting is catching it, but you have this pretty little swirl, you know, a tri swirl of frosting on top of your cupcake. And that's just with a pastry bag, no tips. All you, all I did, like you saw, I just cut, you know, I cut about an inch back um, onto the piping bag and we have, we have ourselves a frosted cupcake friends. <laughs> um, Okay, okay, so I do have yeah. a couple of questions now going back to ingredients. Um, okay. Can you use baking soda for the muffins? Like, could you add add baking soda to the to them if you wanted them to be like fluffier? Um, yeah, yeah. Again, I would I would say that if you follow a recipe and it doesn't turn out the way that you doesn't turn out right whatever you determine that you know that right to be or if it doesn't taste like mom's did or if it you know doesn't look like the way your neighbor did it and they gave you their recipe whatever try their recipe first and then if it's not working out then yeah I would troubleshoot it and if if that's one of the issues um yeah then I think for sure you try adding some baking powder or soda okay. depending upon other ingredients that are in there <laughs> Okay, and then the other question is, if you have the recipes for your frosting anywhere uh, posted or not? Yeah, so, um, so Lindsay, I can email them to you before we upload the, um, the video tomorrow, if that's helpful. There are other classes that I've done uh, for Michael's on their YouTube that does have like my buttercream frosting on there. Um, I'm not quite sure if I've done the chocolate yet, but I'm happy to send that over. I'm happy to share. For yes, sure. that would be perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You are so welcome. Okay. So let's just do one more, one more little technique with just the no tip. And that's just simple. Like I'm just going to do a little dollops of the uh, frosting. So it's going to look like just little tiny little bumps, you know, on top. And with this, I just do, um, again, I start about a quarter of the way up and I just apply a little amount of pressure. And you can see I'm kind of swirling my wrist as I pull it up. And that's just to add like a little bit of, you know, a little bit of texture, a little bit of something extra to that little dollop. 
you don't have to do that. You can just squeeze and kind of release and pull up like that. And if we do kind of a bigger one here in the middle, kind of, kind of a little flowery, but if you like the tips, like the little tips, great. If not, you can like dip your finger in a little bit of water and just kind of pat them down. I don't have water right here. Um, otherwise I would do it, but the other thing you can do is just let it set up for like a minute or two and with buttercream, it'll kind of form like a little tiny crusty shell <laughs> kind of uh, crust, I should say. And, um, and then you'll be able to just like pat it down and those tips will go away. But I have over here some, some sprinkles and um, I'll show you, here's a fun thing you can do with this guy. You can take, put some sprinkles in just like a little ramekin and then you take your cupcake and you kind of just dip it in on the sides. So you're just getting the outer ring maybe a little bit onto the other side, but you're just giving it a little, little decoration there on, let's see, yeah, on the outside. And with these, I'm just gonna sprinkle some on top. And look how cute. These are some fun icing decorations that again, we'll have available. But how fun would that be as like a place setting for Thanksgiving? or a neighbor gift, or a gift for yourself when you need a treat. So just some cute, cute little, little ideas. Um, okay, then I'll show you, I'm just gonna pick one of these other tips. This is an open star tip and it's kind of bigger, but um, I'll just show you that same movement that we did with the round opening on the pastry bag and just show you how different it looks when you have a slightly different resource available to you by way of frosting tip. It's gonna be like the same motion, but it's gonna look really different. So let's move these guys. All right, hold on. There we go. My frosting was a little runny when I went to pipe. And so I just had to squeeze some out, but okay. So I'm gonna do that same circle and I've completed it. And now I'm gonna make one more and I've completed that. And now I'm doing one more. So it's again, like the exact same technique. You just have a different tip, a different tool. So that's why I love, I really do love tips. I'm like frosting tip nerd and I'm totally embrace it because you really can do so many different things with them. And um, it's just fun. It's just fun to see, like, let's do that same. Well, with this, I'm just gonna apply like equal amounts of pressure and do like one giant kind of blob and I'm, you see, I'm not doing anything other than just squeezing, okay? Like how fun is that? So cute. So any questions at this point? We're a little tight on time, so I'm gonna skip these two other little guys and we'll move on to our next fun treat. We good? We good, we good? All right, so here's a little bit of a plug. If you have not yet had an opportunity, Matt, do you want to take your mat, please? Thank you. Um, to go to Michael's and try some of our meltables, I highly, highly recommend that you do. These are like candy wafers. You can see we have them right here. Inside this bag, they, they look like this. So they just are these little little wafers that um, you melt. They are basically like a compound chocolate. So you don't necessarily, you don't have to temper them. Like you don't have to be a chocolatier to know how to use these. And for someone who's not a chocolatier <laughs> and um, um, 
won't have time in her lifetime to become one. This, these are so, so fun. They're so versatile. They're, they're delicious. We have lots of, lots of colors, lots of flavors. The ones I have here today are peanut butter. I, and salted caramel and our white, um, our bright white. The bright white is just like this creamy, delicious vanilla flavor. Um, and the salted caramel and the peanut butter are like next level delicious. I mean, sometimes I just eat them like popcorn <laughs> sometimes, um, but they're so good. So I'm just gonna show you like just this really fun, quick, easy, snack, treat, whatever you want to call it. It's a fun variation on traditional caramel apples. And you're going to see how easy it is. And I wish like I could virtually share with all of you um, um, some slices because they're so yum. All right. So you're just going to grab some apples. We have a variety here. I'm going to cut up a Granny Smith and a Honeycrisp. Um, you want to make sure that you have your apples washed beforehand. And um, if you have this cool little doohickey, little apple slicer, then it makes it extra easy. But if not, then um, you can just use a knife, which I also have here. So you just, this thing, I should have, I should have showed you, but it has a circle in the center and you just put that like right over the stem of the apple and then you just press down on it and it makes this beautiful um, slice slices rather and take them out there have you do have to be careful though because I can't tell you there have been a few times when I've done this and a little bit like nicked my my thumb in the process. <laughs> so just be mindful that it does have sharp edges. Now you can see this kind of slices them a little bit thicker. Um, and if you're gonna use, let's just put them on the plate like so. So if you're getting this plate of caramel apple nachos and you get a thick apple, then you, it's your lucky day. <laughs> but the other thing, you can just take your knife and cut your apple the old fashioned way, friends. And these ones I'm just gonna cut a little bit thinner. And I'm just, there's no like actual rhyme or reason to like how I'm placing them. I do like having a different types of apples though because I even do it like in my pies just because you know maybe you get a little bite that's sweet maybe you get a bite that's tangy it's just like a it's like a surprise it's really fun all right so you can see this is the this is two apples I would say that's like about a 10 inch plate this there there's no actual recipe we're just taking apples think of it like a deconstructed caramel apple it makes it easy to eat first of all if you're the sharing type it makes it easier to share than like a traditional caramel apple but if you don't share no one will judge you because you know that's that's real good all right, so on to the meltables. Now, again, these are flavored. So these are salted caramel. I'm All I'm gonna do is put this in the microwave for about one minute, and you're gonna see how well they melt, how quickly they melt, how creamy they come together. And um, we're gonna use that on, we're gonna drizzle that over the top of here. Now, if you, can you get kind of a shot over here, Jordan? There's some really great helpers, helpers here. <laughs> so there's some, um, you can see here, I've got kind of an overload of, I've got candy corn, chocolate chips, we've got chopped nuts, we've got cinnamon, Reese's Pieces. 
I mean, you could do marshmallows, you could do coconut, like whatever you think would go good on top of your apple slices, give it a go, give it a try. Um, you're going to think I might sound a little crazy. I have not done this with this recipe, but I, I, one of my favorite snacks is a slice of apple, a slice of cheddar cheese and a Ritz cracker. So there might be some, something fun to that by way of um, nachos. Um, I'll have to try it sometime, but um, anyway. Okay. So did you, that was one minute in the microwave. Okay. See how all those melts, they started like this one minute later, they look like this. Now these meltables because of, um, just because of their composition, they, when cooled and add it, like if you add nothing to them, which most of the time we don't, right? Because that's like their magical power that they melt and kind of set back up. Um, they will set back up hard like this. So they'll have like a little bit of a snap to them. Like I, I just am pinching that and it's breaking in to half. So when I drizzle these over these caramel apples and this comes back to about room temperature, they will set up just like this. So if you don't want that kind of, um, I say crunchy, it's not crunchy like a cracker, but it just has this really, really nice snap to it. If you don't want them to set up that hard, you could add a little bit of coconut oil or um, vegetable oil to the meltables just to make it like a little bit softer. And um, I would say like for every cup of meltables that you make, you could try adding like a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. And again, it's just going to make it so it's not, it's not hard like this. It just has a little bit more like you could sink your teeth into it and it wouldn't snap. So it'll still taste delicious and taste, you know, the same. Um, but it'll just, the texture will just be a teensy bit different. Okay. So anyway, so here we have our apple slices and I'm just taking this salted, our salted uh, caramel meltables and I'm drizzling just with a spoon over the top. Now, if you were, you know, if you were doing this for like a party, you could um, obviously put it on another put on another layer, put it on a bigger board or a bigger dish or even a bowl. I mean, you could just throw these in a bowl and just doing that. Now, if you're like an extra, extra uh, caramel person, which I happen to be one of those people, I'm just taking some butterscotch caramel and drizzling that as well because why not? <laughs> so we had one question that, um, yeah. that do you suggest um, putting on, putting some lemon juice on the apples? Yes. Yeah. That's a great question. And thank you for saying that. Yeah. So you can toss your, um, oftentimes like I'll just get like a big plastic bag and I'll put my lemon slices in there excuse me, my apple slices in there. And then I'll put some lemon juice in there and I'll just give them like a good shake. And that helps um, prevent browning. They'll still eventually brown, but it will be significantly, significantly longer. And yeah, they could last out at a party and not, and not be the sad looking apples that no one will eat. <laughs> so that was a great question. And thank you for, thank you for reminding me. Um, okay, so at this point, then we go to our fun, our toppers, and let's see. Let's just add some things. So I'm going to add some cinnamon. So you can see there's really like no recipe, right? It's just um, for all you not nut people, I apologize if this is like making you twitchy. Historically, I like to say you shouldn't put nuts where chocolate should go, but <laughs> apples and nuts, uh, I think they, I think it works, but we'll add some chocolate too. So don't worry. And we've got some chocolate chips. So again, think of it kind of like a, 
a reverse engineered caramel apple, right? You've got your, obviously your apple, you've got your caramel, you've got your chocolate, and you've got your fun, other fun things. I'm a texture, texture gal, so I don't mind that we have the like, you know, runniness of the caramel apple and then the kind of crunch of the meltable and then the sand of the cinnamon. And then, you know, I, I dig that. I think it's fun. It makes life interesting, guys. Okay. Ah, that looks so good. <laughs> it's a little, uh, I mean, it's a little extra. It's a little over the top but it's so fun it's so simple you likely have a lot of these little extra things you know in your pantry um i mean it's halloween coming up you could you could tax the children and hold on to some of their reeses and their candy corns and things um you know and put them in the pantry for for your baking or your you know decorating needs and um anyway i just i love this because it's again it's simple easy to share and people they they love it it's it's out of the box it's not like something that you go to in a you know a party or your you know friend's house for dinner and that you've you've always had this right it's not like a treat you've you've had all the time so anyway super good super easy and yeah i think i think i think timing wise we're pretty pretty close to being done are there any other questions that you might have that I could be helpful in attempting to answer for you at this point. No? Okay, well, if that's the case, then thank you again so much. Double thank you or triple at this point for your patience in the beginning. Sorry about the technical difficulties, uh, but I'm so glad that you were here. And um, please just stay in touch, um, check back often. Um, I teach classes here a few times a month and I do have some upcoming classes that are geared like just towards kids. So there's information on the Michaels website about that um, and their online classes portion. And um, yeah, if you give us a try, just let us know and know how it turned out and have the best day and I will see you next time. Thank you.